good to see you all here tonight for worship at our Savior's United Church of Christ. Um, it also, my name is Keith Mulder. I'm filling in for Pastor Kevin um, as he's a, helping out at Vacation Bible School tonight. Um, I'd like to also say hello to all those who are watching and listening to us from home. Um, we have a couple of announcements. Uh, I'd like to say happy birthday to uh, Philip Bussey, Carolyn Retzloff, Jeanette Wilkes, Iona Altnow, Beverly Fenner, James Clausen, and a late happy birthday to Roy Krause. Today's bulletin is in memory of David Lang given by his family, and the altar flowers are in memory of Lawrence and Irene Perlwitz in their anniversary. Uh, David Thompson is here on uh, the piano and the organ tonight. Uh, he's reminding us that choir does start on September 8th, so I'm sure he's all fired up about that. Um, and the missions committee, is, uh, has a list of things that they're collecting for school supplies in the area. If you'd have a chance to uh, look at that and uh, help out with that, that'd be very much appreciated. Um, all who are able to please stand uh, for the words of welcome and good news. Call to worship. Creator resides in the midst of creation, calling us to this community. Our world awaits. God, our righteousness, gazes upon the beloved with delight and concern. Our bodies wait for the Holy One, our help and shield. The Spirit of the living God greets us with fresh winds and new mercies. Our souls, uh, on page two, uh, in the hymnal, two, page 256, and it's also projected. Please join me in the invocation. Abundant God, we wait for you with longing, hope, and anticipation. May your kingdom be realized in this community. May your people be your ambassadors. May your love be our propeller in the world and our beacon to direct us home. Fill us with the bread of life and nourish our spirits to be the good, good news in the world. Amen. first scripture tonight is from Genesis 15 verses 1 through 6. After these things the word of the Lord came to, came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. 
But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you say? And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. He'll be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed, and he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Our, sec our second scripture lesson today is from Psalm 33, verses 12 through 22. Happy is a nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all humankind. From there he sits enthroned. He watches all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their needs. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a vain hope for victory, and by its great might it cannot save. Truly the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love to, li to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is, our he is our help and shield. Our heart is glad to see him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Please rise for the call to confession. Let us confess our sin, trusting in God's grace. Gracious God, you have created a world of abundance and flourishing. Every resource, every gift, every product originates from the generosity of your creation and the creativity you have bestowed upon us. Forgive us for misuse and overuse of your gifts. Reveal our miserly attitudes toward the plentiful trove of resources you have entrusted to our care. So generosity in us, reveal abundance to us, enable flourishing through us, amen. Let every good and perfect gift come from above. Grace is such a gift, mercy is another. Transformation and new life descend freely from the Most High to all who would receive it. Receive the assurance of God's grace and compassion as precious treasure made available to all. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us bless one another in Christ as we are comfortable. Our next reading tonight is from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3 and 8 through 16. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, our faith, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not invisible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. 
and he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful, who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had, they had left behind, they, have, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Our gospel lesson tonight is from Luke chapter 12, verses 32 through 40. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourself that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where neither, where no thief nor comes near or no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell, he, truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, Blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Please rise for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we have a visual reflection as proje projected, uh, Here I Stand, the Royal Priesthood. Luther's understanding of scripture initiated many changes in the day-to-day -day lives and practices of Christians. 
One that stands out more than most was Luther's recognition that all baptized Christians have the authority and commission to speak Christ's words of promise when and where they're needed. The Bible identifies this as the royal priesthood. In Luther's time and ours, the title of priest carries with it a certain heft and obligation. To be called a priest is to have the obligation to deliver God's word to the world. Simply put, priests are responsible for passing on faith in Christ by making sure the promise of Christ is heard by all who have ears to hear. Luther took this to heart. The people in the pews not only have a right to speak Christ's word of promise themselves, but they also have a duty to make sure those who stand in the pulpit are fulfilling their responsibility of delivering God's word to the people. Therefore, Luther wrote the small catechism to serve not only as a teaching tool, but also as a guide to what the scriptures say and declare to the world. The importance of placing the promise of the scriptures into the hands of the people, making them royal priests, so to speak, became a primary emphasis for the remainder of Luther's life. Luther knew full well what happens when God's word enters the ears of people. Taking his cue from the Apostle Paul, Luther knew how confessions of faith come about. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of God. All of this was said and done so you can remember, a mighty fortress is our God. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for bringing us together to worship you. We thank you for your presence here as we sing to your honor and grow, growing tall and tasseling. Many of us are harvesting fruits and vegetables out of our own gardens. We thank you for these blessings and the chance to enjoy them. We pray for all those in need of healing and your special care. We keep in our prayers Bill Kaufman, Lorraine Fisher, Steve McSorley, Bob Scouton, Caroline Sowersby, Charlotte Wiegand, Roy Gamal, Kathy Ludke, Roberta Harriff, 19 Unspoken, and all the many others in need of your healing and care. We thank you for all those who attended and served at the Vacation Bible School this week. We pray that the children have a better understanding of your love for all of us. We ask that all of us are drawn closer to you. Help each of us to better understand you and to share that love with one another. Lord, we pray for peace, not only in this country, but throughout the world. We pray for wisdom and guidance for our leaders of this great nation and the nations around the world. Help us all to work together to find peaceable solutions to all our world's problems, to work together to end hunger, physical and social abuses. Help us to treat each other as children of God, as people created in your own image. Please open our hearts and minds to you. Help us to let you in and give you complete control of our lives. Make our faith strong giving us complete trust that you are in control, that you love us and you will provide for all our needs. Help us to live each day for you, knowing that with you all things are possible. We ask that you forgive all of our great and many sins, teach us how to pray, hear all our great and many prayers, in thy, pray in thy name we pray, amen. Please join me in the prayer of our Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we have a song projected. It's named Broken Vessels. Please pray with me. 
Lord. Uh, these last couple of days have uh, been kind of crazy, kind of busy. On Tuesday, I, I, I prepared the, the sermon. God, I spent uh, four or five hours, got it all done. About four o'clock, I thought, well, I'll call her back up on my computer and just read it over and fix any mistakes. Uh, just check it over like I normally do, and my computer didn't start. So I go, uh-oh, got a problem here. Uh, but we had company coming for supper that night, so we ate supper, and then we visited uh, with, with our company and the next door neighbor after supper that night, and I was telling her about my problem. My computer didn't work. My, my neighbor's name is Beth, and she says, well, maybe God is telling you that your sermon is no good and you need to rewrite it. So, uh, so Wednesday, I, I went to the computer shop to get my computer looked at. They couldn't fix it, so yes, I did have to rewrite my sermon. So I hope this one's better. You know, we'll find out. So. Also, I'd just like to tell you, um, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to lead worship. Um, I, I really enjoy preparing the lessons. I find it both challenging and rewarding. I learn a lot of new things while, pre pre while preparing sermons. It brings a new and clearer meaning to the scriptures for me, but it also creates a lot of questions. For me, it's just a great way to learn and to strengthen my faith. I guess it's my, my way of doing Bible study, you know, so. Um, but let's get started here, so. Today's message comes from Luke 12, verses 32 through 40. It comes to us in three different parts, but its main theme, we need to, is, its main theme is we need to prepare ourselves for his return. We are not to fear his return. We need to remember that God loves us. We are to treasure his return. He comes to join with us. Not at, we are not going to be his slaves as we would be up to a master. He wants to be with us. He wants to join with us. And we must be prepared for his return. We need to share the good news of his return with others. Let's begin with verses 32 through 34 where we read, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Here God is telling us not to be afraid. We are to remember God loves us. He wants to be with us and he is preparing a place for us. He wants to bless us and ask that we share our gifts so that we may bless others. We know that God loves us, and God tells us that uh, if, if he clothes the lilies of the fields and provides for the birds of the air, how much more will he care for us, we who are created in his own image? We need to trust that our needs will be provided for. This can be difficult for us, I know it is for me. I struggle with the words, sell all your possessions. I don't believe that is what God is asking me to do, exactly that. But I do believe he is asking me to share what I have been blessed with. I often keep much more from myself and give much less to others than I should. Being Part of being human is thinking that we are in control. We, we can take care of ourselves. Are the possessions we have, the money in the bank, the money in our retirement accounts, things that we have earned with our own sweat, can we use and spend as we see fit because we work for them? We earned them? Or do we see these things as a blessing from God? He blessed us with good health to go to work every day, blessed us with, good, with a good job, surrounded us with good people to help us to plan and save for our future. We also read, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is something I constantly need to remind myself. All that I have is a gift from God, and God wants me to share these gifts with others and not just hoard them for myself, when we share our time, our talents, 
and our money with others. We are sharing our love for Jesus and others. We are bringing others closer to God and building the kingdom of God. This is what God commands us to do. Spread the gospel to everyone. In verses 35 through 38, we read, Be dressed and ready for service and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. In these verses, Jesus is telling us of a treasure that awaits for us if we are vigilant. We know that God is preparing a place for us, for those who follow him. Being ready for Jesus' second coming is less about an actual time and place and more about imagining Jesus' activity in the world. When and where you least expect it, or imagine seeing it. When Jesus calls us to be ready, to be prepared, it's not just for that day that we will meet Jesus face to face. I believe he is telling us to be ready all the time to do his will. Jesus tells us when we feed the hungry, we feed him. When we give to the poor, we give to him. We know that when we bless others, we are also blessed. This is part of the treasure, part of the blessings of the watchful. Not all of God's blessings are material things, money, clothes, possessions. We are blessed with so much more. We have friends, families, talents and gifts that we can share with others. Time to encourage. We have time to listen. Time to offer advice and console. Yes, we need to be be prepared for the day Jesus returns. But just as importantly, we need to be ready to serve others each day as Jesus commands. In verses 39 and 40 we read, But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. In these last couple of verses, Jesus is telling us to be prepared, as if we knew a thief was coming to break into our home. If we are prepared, we won't be robbed. As many of you know, I worked in the dairy industry for the past 44 years. Over that time, I've been involved in many plant inspections and audits by the state, USDA, our customers. I used to be really afraid. What if they found something wrong? What kind of trouble would we get in? But over the years, I grew to understand. Knowing this made me much less anxious when unexpected audits and inspections came up. To me, this is what this text is all about. We must prepare ourselves for the future. By doing so, we will also prepare ourselves for today. I'd like to leave you with one final quote. Fear, treasure, and being prepared is the pattern for discipleship. Being without fear, knowing the source of your treasure, that is your identity, your worth. This is what makes it possible to be, to be prepared for and be a participant in the kingdom. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, help us to prepare ourselves for the day of your return. Help us to not fear your coming again and to spend eternity with you, knowing that we have been your willing and obedient and faithful servants. Use each of us to spread the good news to others and to help us to build your kingdom and to change the world. Amen.
line. Um, in Luke 12, verses 34, where informs us, for where your treasure is, is there your heart will be also. Let our hearts direct the use of our resources, our time, and our talents. May our generosity meet God's abundance in attending to the needs and hopes of the community. Let us please rise for the offertory response. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Generous one, receive the gifts we bring as we return a portion of your treasure to the use of your kingdom. May your will be manifested and your creation restored through sharing these gifts, offerings. Amen. Let us sing, let us break bread together, verses one and two. seated. With two of the disciples took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread. In the company of all believers, every time and beyond time, we come to this table to know the risen Christ in the breaking bread. God be with you. We lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God most high. God, our loving creator, close to us as breathing and distant as the farthest star, we thank you for your constant love for all you have made. We thank you for all that sustains life, for all people of faith in every generation who have given themselves to your will, and especially for Jesus Christ, whom you have sent from your own being as our Savior. We praise you for Christ's birth, life, death, and resurrection, and for calling forth of your church for its mission in the world, gifted by the presence of your Holy Spirit. We offer ourselves to you as we unite our voices with the entire family of your faithful people everywhere. Holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory. O God, most high, blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna. Merciful God, as sisters and brothers in faith, 
we recall anew these words and acts of Jesus Christ. As they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples. Christ given for you. Let us pray. We give thanks, Almighty God, for that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world with courage and peace. 
rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I'd like to ask everybody now to rise for our benediction.